Hey, I'm Nick Calthorn Gamer. Welcome back to PCM 22. It's career mode, and this is episode 41. We're doing things a little differently this year when it comes to recruiting for, well, a couple reasons. One, the recruiting pool has grown significantly. And the reason for that is we now, as a world tour team, have access to pretty much everybody. Dossier point wise, just about everybody is within reach. The most expensive guys are still going to be the most expensive guys, and we don't want to pay for the most expensive guys. But outside of that, we could te technically go after you know pretty much anybody we wanted. But then we have the rule restrictions that we're playing within of one rider per nation. So to prepare for my dossiers this year, and with the simple fact that we have a huge range of expiring contracts, I have done some prep for this transfer window uh, that I haven't had to do in past ones. And here's the reason why. I only have nine returning riders. Five climbers, two punchers, a sprinter, and a classics rider. That's it for the lockdown for next year. We need to sign anywhere from seven to nine this season. Get by with 18 next year because you don't want to overload, commit too much, I wouldn't be opposed to signing more if the valuation, if the if they're all cheap, we could take more than nine. But I don't want to go crazy in spending. So we're only going to do more than nine if it's quite affordable, you know, outside of one to two guys. And especially if it's high potential type riders. But minimum is seven. That's a lot of riders to sign in one transfer window on a budget. Realistically, what I'm targeting for next year is one more climber to get to six. Five's already a pretty good number, but you've got to have rotationally, you know, at least one coming in. I definitely want to add another puncher. Two's not enough. Three will get us there. Some of the climbers we have are fairly punchy anyway. They're just climbers first. We definitely need another sprinter. Uh, like Hands down, big time need another sprinter. Now we do have our classics guy who can kind of sprint. We do have, I, uh, puncher or somebody who can you know kind of sprint but y you've got to have more than what we have in fact maybe we need two and then we need some classics writers for for sure we totally need some classics writers on my expiring contracts without going into the detail on those right now on my expiring contracts i have four hands down that a hundred percent i want to keep pithy hoggins Ponomar, Mickles. Okay, Mickles will double in the classic slash sprint area. Hoggins gets us another uh, classic rider. Ponomar, a little bit of an all-rounder. And Pithy is another puncher. Ponomar, technically, climber. So, you know, there's that boost to, what, 6-3-1-3 across those four disciplines. And that would get us to 13. We still then need anywhere from three to five or more riders in addition. Now, those four aren't going to be cheap. Pithy could be an expensive signing for us. I don't know. But I think that group, for the most part, should be relatively affordable with staff and with our intake of cash prizes. Now that we're, you know, World Tour, I've, I've got a pretty good sample size by the 1st of May through four months of just about how much we can bring in monthly to cover costs. Staff is a cost and staff is not cheap. Having a development team is not cheap. That all costs money. So right now, entering next season, we are spending 94,000. We can afford to get up to about 175 with where we're expecting to be financially. So that means we have 80,000. Technically 81, but we have 80,000 to spend. That's how much we can afford to put into contracts. I would imagine between Pithy, Hoggins, Ponomar, and Mickles. I mean, that's probably going to spend 30,000 of that re-signing those guys. There are two riders that would like to re-sign, but I'm thinking probably are going to be budget-wise pushing it. The one that's really going to be pushing it, I would think, is Bogley. Bogley is massively overrated compared to what he actually is. He's only won a few races in his entire career, 
we're not winning with Bogley, we're winning with other guys. But Bogley is technically our highest rated guy, which means he's going to demand top dollar. He's probably going to demand, you know, 40000 just him. I don't want to spend 40000 on Bogley. And if I could sign Bogley for 20000 and those other four guys for maybe 20000 combined, well, 40000 combined for those five would probably be worthwhile to hang on to. And, you know, we'd be guaranteed still world tour with, with that group. McKellar is the other one. McKellar is a great all-arounder. And where Bogley has struggled to win, McKellar wins a lot. And I think McKellar is going to be much more affordable. McKellar has one issue. He's Australian. And there's plenty of good Australian riders. So parting ways with McKellar could easily open the doorway to another high-quality rider. And for that, that's a trade-off that we're willing to do. The thing about the first four guys, for the most part, Outside of Hoggins, I think, is the only exception to this. Ponomar is, what, he, is he our Ukrainian guy? Uh, Nichols is Estonian. Pithy is a New Zealander. They are the best rider in their country. That's a big thing that I'm looking at, and that takes us into this next part. I am definitely letting a handful of guys go. I'm already, I've got six committed that are out the door that we are not going to re-sign. Uh, Lacazette, Ben Faisal, we're moving on to a new sponsor this year anyway, so we won't need to keep those two for the sake of sponsorship. Uh, Frigo, he's good, but there's better Italian options out there. Uh, Bano, Coop, better Belgian, better German riders, potentially. Uh, and Cleverwell, there's much better British riders out there, and he has not developed fast. Those four in particular... I wouldn't mind hanging on to them. I don't mind them being on the team, and I think they would be very affordable to re-sign. But the thing is, is we've now gone from a team that was rising, that was struggling to sign the best talents, to we can go after the best talents, which means we need to have the best talents in the best nations. If we're going to spend big, that's where you're going to spend big. You want the best rider out of Britain. You want the best rider out of Germany, or the highest potential at least. So what I've been doing this year, different from the previous seasons, is I'm going through and searching, not just in the dossier area, which it's nice that you can filter and search through there, but I'm searching nation by nation at the whole list of writers. And so what I'm doing, and we're using Poland here as an example as I've been going through the alphabet, so we're into the later end now, and I wanted to kind of cover a nation that makes a lot of sense to look at. Kwiatkowski is the best rider in Poland, and he is fairly affordable, but he's 34 and declining. And Micah is 35 and declining. And Yolkowski is somebody that you look at here. He's 28. He's almost fully developed, and he's a mediocre sprinter. He's a 76-78 sprint. Now, could I use something like that on my team as a lead-out man? The occasional first option? Uh, sure. Sure. Why not? He's not going to be the cheapest. He's already making 15 and he's probably going to ask for, you know, something higher as he has no contract. Now, in terms of dossier points, it's only costing three. And this is what I was talking about, that it's getting pretty open to us on who we go after. But what I want to know is, is he going to be the best Polish rider that we can get our hands on? And then do we want him? Well, I'm going to go with no on that one. But as a 26-year-old who's a little bit worse right now, a better option? Well, he can't sign him anyway, but no. I want to look at somebody like Damian Kwiatkowski, 21. He does have a contract, but what does he look like? Now, he's looking as a 4.5, which is the best Poland has anyway. But he's looking at a 5-star stage racer slash climber type guy who's also going to be fairly punchy. He's going to be balanced as an all-arounder kind of guy, and we do well with those. It's a little bit like a McKellar, right? That that would be somebody you could sign. But we can't sign him this year. And that's why I'm looking at the search page. I want to know if he's the guy that we want on our team to lock down Poland and not allow us to sign any other Polish riders. I don't want to turn around and sign... Somebody with no contract, Marciniak, he's 19. He could be a decent stage racer, but he's not going to be as good of a climber. 
it's because he's going to be slightly better as a time trialist, but he's not that good as a time trialist. You know, if he could 5-5 five, five each of these and was an okay puncher, then you're like, okay, that's that's a solid talent. But, I mean, look at his web. It's not going much of anywhere, even though he's only 19 and has never had a professional contract. He's raced one day in his entire career. This guy is not the guy. And there's a chance that we accidentally sign that guy to a multi-year deal because he's the best one we see when we're looking at the Polish dossiers and not seeing somebody like the younger Kwiatkowski, who is definitely a better option even though he's two years older. He's got plenty of potential ahead of him, and he's going to be much better. I mean, you know, looking at that web, it's a similar profile, but he's already at a level that the other guy is going to top out at, and he's got quite a bit more ceiling. Now, does that mean I'm going to sign him? I don't know. But we don't have to worry about that because that's next year. But this is how I'm going through. Nation by nation. A lot of the nations, it's quick and easy to move on from because I do know that if you are low, no matter how good your potential is, you're not going to get anywhere near it when you're that low, if you start too low. So we are making sure that we're picking guys up that are decent riders now and then have that high potential and are young and are going to be the best rider in that nation at some point. That's what we're looking to get after. And so it's a bit more of a process this year than years past. So far, I have about four dossiers that I've opened just a handful of points. And I have a, a a list of six more names likely going to go after now or throughout the dossier periods. And then I'm going to finish going through the rest of the alphabet, which of course, you know, we're at Poland now. So uh, that list is getting a lot shorter. So I have a total of three targets that are going to be a hard sign. I think all my other targets are fairly easy signs based on some criteria. We'll go over that in a second. But I had to pick because I can't go after all three. Technically, I could. But I know that financially, we can't afford anywhere near all three. Probably going to just be able to afford one, possibly zero of these three. And we may end up signing just literally all of the others on this list. So at best, we're going to get one. Of those three, the dossier points are of you know, concern. So what we have is Ben Turner, Thibaut Nice, and, or Nice, and then Bogley. Now, Bogley is 10 points, and he's not terribly interested in coming back. I think he's in the 16 to 30 range is where he's at. None of them are terribly interested up front. So if I'm going to have any chance at signing them, I have to spend the dossier points immediately here 1st of May and throughout the period to have any chance of getting them to the affordable range. Anything less than 100% interest, and there's a very good chance that they will not be willing to sign. 12 points is already asking a lot from us on that. 24 points is asking a ton. So we are putting in, we are gonna commit, but not to all three, committing to two. And of those three, Bogley's the oldest. Bogley is very one-dimensional. He's a puncher and puncher only and he's not even that great of a puncher. And therefore, we're going to try Ben Turner. We're going to try Thibaut Nice and see if we have a chance to sign one of the two of them. And we are giving up on Bogley right away. Technically our best guy, but again, not really. Not even close. He's barely top 10 for our team. Bit overrated, and we would have to overpay to keep him. So in turn, right now, 24 points. Go to those two guys, and we'll see what we can do about bringing them up into an affordable range. And we'll try. We'll have the points available, because outside of those two, and especially if we're already giving up on Bogley, we will easily have enough points to go after all of our other re-signings, including McKellar. So that's five targets to re-sign. And we're looking to sign nine, which means we need four more guys. We'll hope for one of those two, but I won't count on it. But then... I'm going to have a flurry of high potential writers. And it looks like I might be able to sign literally all of them for their minimum, especially if we don't sign one of those two top guys. And I don't think that, like, say, Pithy, who is the highest rated of those expiring that we're still going after, assuming that Pithy is only four points for us, I think we're going to get him at a fairly affordable rate. You know, 
might be that 20,000, but I don't think it's going to cost an arm and a leg unless he levels up again before the signing period. Between the other guys, what I'm trying to do now with our six points that we get in each dossier period is go after those who have the current lowest interest, and we're already doing that with Pithy and Hoggins. As in this entire group, outside of these two guys that we're going after, all have high interest level already. And that's why I feel more confident of taking that big swing, you know, uh, baseball metaphor. It's strike one. You're expecting that fastball down the middle. You're going to throw everything into it because you know you still have, you know, you still have strike three to work with. So you're, you're thinking fastball a little high right down the middle, and you're thinking long ball. Right, you're thinking I'm hitting this thing out of the park. I got it. I got a guy on first, and we're down by a run. This is gonna put us up by a run if they throw this pitch at me, swing and miss wildly, or you hit it out of the park. For that, we still have a strike to work with if you know if that doesn't pan out, and that's because all of these other signings are quite interesting, and we have more than enough dossier points to eventually add them all onto the list. And it's going to put us well above nine anyway. You know, if Pithy ends up the most expensive guy and is, say, 20000 and, you know, it's 15 for Hoggins and blah, 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 you know, down that list. If we're spending 50 on re-signing our five guys and then we still have 30 to spend and we have, say, six or seven other targets that are all prospects and all will all sign for at or near minimum, then yeah, we'll easily go above our nine and get them and still probably have 10 or 15K to spare for next year to spend on, you know, some sort of re-signing for those expiring contracts. I like where we're at right now for the potential signings. I just don't know if we're going to be able to afford a Ben Turner or, or t Bonis, but we'll see. We'll see what kind of money is involved in trying to get those guys signed on. All right, folks, it's the Giro d'Italia, and we're already on stage number two. And our goal for this race, I'm not ready to go for GC and the Grand Tours yet. It's our first ever invitation to them. And while Gonzalez and Lenny Martinez continue to improve, they are not ready yet. They are not going to tear it up. Can we crack the top ten? Sure. Sure, absolutely. I think we go all in. We could absolutely crack the top 10. Maybe we can squeeze our way up to about fifth place, but we're not going to contend. And it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort just for a back end of the top 10 type performance as the most likely outcome. Our objective for the sponsor is to win a stage for each of the Grand Tours. So I mentioned this at the beginning of the year, but my plan, my intention here, and we need to back up and, and let those three come to us here. My goal for each of them is not GC, but we're specializing in each of the three races, and then we're going to go for what we can. For the Giro, we're going to go for those stage wins, and we brought our best climbers. And my real objective, King of the Mountains jersey. I want to win the King of the Mountains jersey and then as many stages as I can. Somehow Bogley is still away from these guys and if they don't really step on it, I would be happy to uh, stay away from them and just claim the points. Bogley is out here, not for the stage, but he's out here for these first three King of the Mountain points. So either they make contact with him soon, and they are close, there you go. Really, five to six effort, that's it. That's all they're willing to give. Right, right away from these guys like that. Who do we have? Easy, easy to beat kind of guys. Bogley should quite easily take the uh, points on that next climb. Beat them on the climb itself. But anyway, uh, there's three more points available at the end of the stage we're going to aim for the punchiness on this stage and see what we can do with it but like i said we're going to try to win as many stages as we can and we are going to try to win the king of the mountains now i'm not 100 percent sure who it is i necessarily want to go for but it's going to be between three guys and others will spend time in various stages trying to steal king of the mountain points away from contenders so uh gonzalez he's a 79 76 in the mountains and hills 
He's a 73 flat, 73 stamina, and has 73 acceleration. That's okay. The 79 mountain is obviously good. Uh, Lenny Martinez is the most comparable, and Martinez is a 79-75, so almost identical. Uh, his acceleration is less and his flat is less, but he's got better stamina. So those guys are just about even with one another. And then Arietta is our other choice, who has the 76-80, so he's punchier for those pushes, for those King of the Mountain points, but he's a couple points worse on the mountains. So those bigger climbs are going to be worth a lot more points. He might struggle to get those. Uh, but then he's got good flat acceleration and stamina similar to what gonzalez has i think gonzalez may be the best option because of the flat because of the acceleration the stamina is a little less than uh, martinez but he's a little more well-rounded meanwhile we are fitness peaked we are objective set for most of these guys we're gonna have really good race day conditions enough so that you know if we really wanted to we could do okay and the uh, GC, but no, it's, it's fine. We have a goal. We're here for this. We have plenty of years, plenty of years to run for the GC. 4.5K to go on this climb, and it's not much of a climb. I mean, we're looking at 5%. I think I could easily outclimb these guys with Bogley, and therefore I want to attack as soon as possible. Uh, the later we save it, the more these other guys could threaten. But we have the acceleration and the hills. Bokley could easily win this stage today, especially if we get this done and drop back. Uh, I won't put in any effort after a climb. Why, by the way, Wout Van Aert is the leader of the overall right now. Bokley now in a very good position, second wheel with 2k to go. If this guy peels off, then we will attack instantly. 1.4, and he does. Just over 1k out, so attacking for the climb. Starting a little easy on it. Now we'll start pushing a little bit harder as this guy is really trying to dig in there and get up beside us, but Bogley's got him. Bogley's got him. Three points for Bogley. He's probably got the jersey locked as there's only three points left. It should go to the guy who scored those three points first. You have to overtake them otherwise. So uh, Bogley will now sit on. No more work the rest of the way. He's, if these guys want to keep on riding, let them. Uh, Bogley's now focused on the stage. Final 10K, and we are setting up our sprint train here for the finale. But no should have been leading this out first. Uh, but he just had a puncture a couple, 10, 8, 10 kilometers ago, and he hasn't quite gotten back up here. Gonzalez doesn't quite have the pace either. And now that I'm this close to the end, 7.5K to go, uh, we're... We're going to just kind of forego Gonzalez and Beno in the line and just use them to uh, kind of break up toe on anybody else. But, you know, Cronge pushing through. And Martinez, even though he's got a plus three, is early on as he's a, a bit less punchy than these other guys. And so it is what it is. 4K to go. 3.5K to go. And I think we want to just kind of push, 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 push. Uh, we'll back off uh, slightly as we climb, and that is now 2.7k. Martinez done onto uh, Arietta. We'll do 97 from here. Nobody keeping up with us at the moment, as we now have 1.8k. They're they're not able to push to get up there, and we're still looking pretty strong with 1.5k. Uh, we'll go 97 for Vermark. He's going to have a lot of pace. We've got a great chance at that stage win today. One to Coop. 900 meters. Again with the 97. Set up Bogley here in a moment. Get that little acceleration, and Bogley now has 700 meters to go, and it's, you know, near cresting. Uh, Bogley, I don't want to sprint, though. I want to just push through, push through. There you go. There you go. Now sprint for the line. Bogley, he's going to have all six points. Coop is going to hang on for second, too. Really should just have everybody sprint from here. There you go. 
So another 1-2 for the team. And we have won our very first Grand Tour stage. And literally our first attempt at one. As you know, we quick simmed the time trial on stage one. So first go. And we've already got our stage win for the Giro out of the way. Team looked so good here. We're all over the front end of this field. Uh, plenty of stages to come. We'll definitely bypass sprint stages, but we've got to get after the king of the mountains. We're going to wear the jersey with Bogley for now. But he's not the guy we're going to be riding for. But like I said, we're going to use guys like Bogley for Mark to get in the break on certain stages to try to keep points away from others but it also depends a little bit on how close the classification is on uh, what we could do we do want to make sure we're going to lose some time with whoever we're picking of those top three guys and like i said gonzalez looks like probably a strong candidate for it so maybe we need to uh, have gonzalez lose time on the first attempt here in a little while Bogley, by the way, picks up maximum points in the sprint as well. So he's got 62 ahead of Coop with 35. And then Coop was also second across, the, uh, second across the line. So he picks up two points. Bogley picks up the maximum six. Really good start as, you know, a few guys that don't matter uh, for the KOM are the only other ones to score any points at all. Gonzalez is not going to be a good candidate. He has not been writing much at all, and yet somehow his fatigue has just built and built and built since the end of January. His race days really haven't been that high. I don't understand what's going on. He's had well, he's had 49 days raced. I mean, that that is a decent number. Uh, but no recovery. I mean, zero recovery. So I don't think we can really use Gonzalez because even though he's about to hit his fitness peak and he's at a 93%, that fatigue is absolutely going to hamper him. Lenny, Lenny Martinez is at 98%. He's a little bit further off from hitting that fitness peak. It's going to take some time. But he's also tired, so I don't think he's a very good choice. I would rather go with Gonzalez at this stage, uh, just knowing that Gonzalez is at least going to have the objective and fitness peak plus three and then that fatigue is just going to kind of knock it back a little bit, turn him into plus twos until it gets really bad anyway. Arietta, the other candidate, it's quite clear to be right now our busy schedule this year is taking its toll. Arietta's only raced 24 days, so that excuse isn't there. Now, he is obviously less fatigued as a result, but he's still very fatigued, and he is nowhere near his fitness peak, which means... I think he's more likely to reach fatigue levels before he is hitting a fitness peak. So he's not going to get bonuses. You can see just how strong the race day condition bonuses are and how close some of these guys are to hitting that fitness peak. Bogley, of course, by the way, the moment we talk about how we're not going to re-sign Bogley and how he hasn't done any, anything, he goes and wins a Grand Tour stage. It's just his sixth career victory. I mean, that's the thing. He's only raced 16 days so far this year because he really doesn't fit that profile. You can see he's stronger as a hill guy than anything else. And he's well-rounded otherwise, but he's not elite. He's just got that 80 hills rating, and that is going to make him crazy expensive to re-sign. And even though he was only making 3000 he's going to ask for probably... I would imagine he's going to ask for something in the neighborhood of forty to 50000 and he had little to no interest to re-sign us or re-sign with us. Well, it's definitely not too late to change my mind yet, and I feel like I could use your input. We have some fatigue in the legs of pretty much all the contenders, but Gonzalez, the one who feels like the best fit, especially with the fittest peak close... Not quite there. Coop has the plus five, looks good, doesn't have a lot of fatigue, but he's only got a 73 mountain, and you're going to have to have mountain and hills rating to succeed here. Same for Bogley. So it really should come down to Arietta, Gonzalez, or Martinez. I don't see anybody else being a proper candidate. Arietta, furthest away from the fitness peak, and not as strong of a climber anyway. 
and the fatigue in the legs, though not as bad as the other two. Martinez is a definite candidate. His fatigue is quite a bit less, you know, 10, 15%, more than 15% below Gonzalez. He will hit his fitness peak, but how long will it be? In a week? When he hits it, could take a little bit, but that could be a really good timing type situation. Uh, he's certainly a little further down in the GC right now, but stage three, we can easily fix that. You send whoever it is in the break to get points at the category three, get the nine points, and then lose time on the final climb. Even though there's 40 points available at the final climb and it's going to put us behind, it's Mount Etna. But you take all the rest of them and you try to get points for whoever it is. And, you know, you burn that one up in the base of the climb. You go get the nine points, drop them back to the group, and just use them earlier on the climb and make sure that they do lose time to set them up. But then you use the other guys to do your best and try to steal some points away from everybody else. Somebody's going to get 40 points. Somebody's going to take that jersey. But it's easy to get back. And, you know, you're not going to face a Mount Etna every day. But we will get points, you know, at other climbs. So it'll be okay. Let me know in the comments below who you think we should be writing for. I think, honestly, it's got to be one of those three. Nobody else is strong enough in their mountain ratings to properly contend. They can go after these Cat 3s. They can go after the Cat 4s. But it's the big climbs that have big points that you've got to have that combination. And those three have it. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.